Give me a minute to throw out some over-under numbers because we had diverse over-under results last year for all four of these teams. The Colts, surprisingly, with the fact that they lost their starting quarterback in the second game of the season, were one of the NFL's best over teams last year at 11 and 6 over under. Again, very surprising given the fact that it was Gardner Minshew at quarterback for the bulk of those games. At home, the Colts 7 and 2 over under, 7 overs, only 2 unders, 51.1 combined points per game. You can look for those numbers to go up even higher this year. So that's a team we're, we're going to be looking to uh, keep on playing Colt overs at home this season. And then you had two teams in both Houston and Tennessee who were one, two of the best under teams last year. Both went 6-11 and 11 over under in the regular season. Uh, they were tied with eight other teams at 65% under the total. That's both Houston and uh, Tennessee. In fact, Tennessee was one of only four teams in the NFL to average less than 37 combined points per game when playing on the road last year and we'll look for that to continue. But one thing that will, I think, uh, even out a little bit was Houston went three and six over under at home last year with the addition of Stephon Diggs and Joe Mixon. You got a healthy tight end room. They drafted a good rookie in Cade Stover at tight end. I do think Houston will improve their numbers, and that's a team I'll look to play a few more overs at home than unders this season. The, the Colts used the most no huddle of any team in the NFL last year. When he was out there, when Minshew was out there, and now you have the insurance policy that is Joe Flacco, which, I mean, think about how Steichen is going to have to uh, maneuver if Richardson does get hurt because it's going to be a completely different offense that's still going to want to go fast. Uh, and and to, to Victor's point on playing overs with uh, the Colts, the, you know, that had a lot to do with their defense not being up to par last year. How does that improve with Gus Bradley, you know, being a, a pretty good teacher on that side of the ball, but is he going to get those results? Um, and with the fact that no huddle is the, you know, often the best friend to an offense and the worst enemy to a defense because they don't have as much time to recover if you hit a home run play and whatnot. So I'm definitely on board with Colts overs. I'm kind of on board with the Colts as a team that could very much surprise because I do think Richardson has it in him to be one of those players that's better uh, as a pro than he is in college. Uh, lay out my most disappointing team in the AFC South this year first. And I'm going to go right to the most popular team inside the division, the Houston Texans. Uh, and this goes to a lot what uh, we talked about, returning to the norm. Uh, it goes to, you know, Greg uh, does a great horse race handicapping show, and one of the big theories is bouncing in horse races where horses run their best race, and they make it very, very difficult to come back the next race after running a career high. Well, it's safe to say that every player on the Houston Texans had a career best year last football season. And the key for me is this, is that they won as many games last year, those 11 wins, was as many as they won in their previous three years combined. That's a big quantum leap for a football team to have to take and make and then have to play up to that same level next year. And I think it was Victor who said, you know, they were the hunter last year. They're going to be the hunted this year. We'll see whether or not they can play up to that same level here. I think it's a disappointment uh, for the Houston Texans this football season. As far as a team that I like inside this division, I'm going to take a look at, long look at the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I consider Jacksonville, but that bad taste in my mouth when I look at uh, Trevor Lawrence's uh, 7.1 passing yards per attempt, until that gets any better, I, I got to let Jacksonville go here. But as Victor mentioned, that bad taste they had in their mouth last year, if that one and five finish, I think that really sets the table for this football team here this year. And remember, the Colts have dominated Houston in the past. They're 33 and 11 and, and straight up on the scoreboard against who's supposedly going to be the best team in the division. Here's the key. Victor also called this out. You take a look at this football team here. They're going to have major revenge in that first game of the season because it was indeed Houston who cost them the playoffs last year. You take a look at the Colts record. The last 16 years in season opening games, they've won once. One, one in 15. Wow. 
So what I'm saying here, guys, is if they can overcome that hurdle, that may just well be a buy sign for the Indianapolis Colts because this football team is going to be really focused. And if they can get over that 1-15 mark in the first game of the football season here, they'll be on their way to winning the AFC South. The way that I look at the AFC South is I have Houston number one because I like their balance on both sides of the football. They've got a quarterback that they're letting play. And, of course, D'Amico Ryan's <clears throat> You know, came came over from San Francisco. Defensive uh, uh, excellence is his trademark. So I like them to win that division. I have them as probably uh, about an 11 win, possibly 12 win team. But I see them as the best team. I think Indianapolis will be a playoff team. I'm not sure if it'll be with nine or 10 wins. I think Jacksonville regresses a little bit this year, although they may match what they did last year, which I think was I think they were nine and eight, uh, if I recall correctly, maybe eight and nine. They were, but I think yes. they were nine. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a continued drop for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they've got quarterback issues. I don't know that Levis is the uh, guy. Remember, he dropped in the draft. He was one of those hot commodities going into the final 48 hours before the draft, and he dropped uh, much more than people thought. These teams are all going to be underdogs in, in many games this year, and underdogs do cover the spread a lot. So as a spread better throughout the year, and – a total's better. You can make money on all of these bad teams covering when they're undervalued. Even though they're bad, they still could be undervalued. So there's money to be made along the way. But if you're talking long-term projections, I think the Colts, Jaguars, and Titans could all be disappointed. 